you have to be prepared for things not to go the way you want them to, but learn from it. And that, that's a key aspect of any grant proposal. They don't all work. There are so many good ideas. It, because you don't make it here, for instance, or somewhere else, it doesn't mean it was a bad idea. It just means there's a lot of really smart people trying to do good things. And that's good. Our first application for phase two was, was not funded. Okay, so again, a failure. But we learned from it. What, what did we learn? We were, by nature, we are heroic people. Well, one of us is a heroic person. So we were trying to solve lots of problems at the same time. That we, a million dollars sounds like a lot of money, but it turns out not to be. It's kind of a depressing thing to say, but it's true. So our, our first application, we were trying to do too much. And what we learned from that exercise was focus. Focus like a laser. Here's the problem we're going to solve. This is the resource we have to address it. These are the key aspects that we can address with that resource. We can't save the world. We can do a little thing, and that's what we're going to focus on doing exceptionally well. There's so many things we all want funding for. I mean, we could easily, if we, everybody here, if I gave you $40 million, you could go off and you'd be still working on things five years down the line and excited about where you're going. The reality is nobody's going to give us $40 million tomorrow. But I think knowing where we are and the resources limitations that we have, where, where can I put the most emphasis right now so that people see that I have potential to manage and innovate with a little bit more the next time? So it's about having the large vision and then breaking it down and saying, what is the most urgent priority that will give me the maximum benefit, maximum advance, maximum outcomes with the limited resources that are present? And it's about reducing the risk to the funding agencies, whether they're philanthropic funding agencies or whether they're commercial partners or government agencies down the line. And I think that's one of the keys I realized, is how do I reduce the risk for all of the different funding agencies that I could work with in the long term? And what would be the first step that would make them want to say, hey, I want to invest in this. I want to move with you. I want to partner with you. And it's about finding that one single focused space in all of my interests that will attract them and will want, make them want to partner with me in the long term. That's the best advice I've heard all day. It's really critical to first have your own vision and then own the vision of the grantor and say, OK, what is it they want to fund and how what is it in what I want to get done absolutely aligns with what they're funding. And that's something sometimes we fail to do because we, love, we fall in love with our own ideas. And it's a, it's a danger as a scientist because, because you're in love with your idea doesn't mean someone else is going to be. You, they, they have their own vision they're in love with and they have the funds. So it's about how do I align what I want to do with what they're in love with funding. And, and that's a really critical step. You have to be able to communicate, here's the important problem. Here's what I'm going to do to solve it. This is why it's going to work in five minutes. Okay? The same is true in a grant proposal, especially in a competition like this. That first paragraph, the first thing lays out, here's why this is crucial. Here's why we've got the solution that other people don't have. Here's how we're going to implement it. And decide or determine whether it's effective, okay? Outcomes, how do I measure that the outcome is what I say it's gonna be? Identifying that is the key to getting people to read your proposal seriously. If you start with a lot of blather about, you know, first of all, you know, coming from my background, all of you people interested in saving brains, deworming is the key, right? So, so we're on the same principle here. So, but if I started a proposal like that and I said, well, you know, uh, more than a billion people harbor parasitic infections from helminths and gave you the life history of parasitology, that would be in the bottom bin. That would be gone. I have to tell you why this is the most important problem, why my solution is really creative, and how we're going to measure whether or not it worked, and what's our timeline or progress line for doing that.